Hello and welcome to This God Day, where I'm going to be talking about worship. I'll be asking four questions. What is worship? Why do we worship? Who or what do we worship? And how do we worship? I will also be using scriptures to see what the Bible says about worship. Now, usually when people think of worship, singing comes to mind. But there are many different ways to worship, which I will talk about towards the end of this God Day. But before we look at how we worship, we need to understand what worship is and the idea behind it. So, what is worship? Well, when I was looking online, I found many definitions, but all with the same sort of idea or theme. Worship is to love, respect, and admire someone or something very much. It's the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity or an important or high-ranking person. Therefore, the reason we worship someone or something is because we look up to it. We are admiring it and respecting it for its glory. Sometimes we can be in awe of the thing that we are worshipping and we prioritise it, make time for it, and sometimes can become dependent and reliant on it. Now, of course, as Christians, we are encouraged in the Bible to worship God and to be in awe of him for how almighty and powerful he is and to be thankful to him for all that he provides us with and worship him for his holiness. Worship can also often come hand in hand with praise. Now, why do we praise something? It's usually to give positive reinforcement or encouragement, to express a warm approval or thanks to something that they have done, that we were impressed by, or an admiration for a quality about someone that we like. Now, what qualities does God have that make us want to praise him? Well, the book of Psalms is full of these qualities. The Psalms offer us ways to rejoice in prayer, to bow in worship, to exalt God for all he does and for all the blessings he pours out on us. The title of Psalms itself, when written in Hebrew, means praises. And the Greek word originally refers to stringed instruments, such as a harp or a lute, and songs sung with their accompaniment. So Psalms is all about praising and worshipping God. And in Psalm 95 verse 6, it says, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. God is our maker. He is our creator. We wouldn't be here if he hadn't breathed his breath into our lungs. We daily need to remember and thank him for the life he has given us, for the people he has surrounded us with, the possessions he has provided us with, the talents and the gifts he has given us with. The list is endless of things that we can be thankful and appreciative of. And following on from worship and praise is thanks and praise. As Psalm 100 says, it's a psalm for giving grateful praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Now, I'm sure I could spend a whole God day going through the different qualities that Psalms mentions about why we should worship God, such as his holiness, his majesty, his power, his provision, his love, righteousness and protection. But right now, I want to ask you a question. Who do you worship? Now, I mentioned as Christians, we are encouraged to worship God. In fact, we are commanded to, as I will come to in a minute. But there are a lot of distractions in this world. 
and many things that we prioritise before God. Many people choose to follow other religions and follow the guides of other false gods. And in Exodus, this actually tells us how angry it makes God. Exodus 32 says, When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all of the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf. Verse 7 then continues to say, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. See, after this, Moses then pleaded with God to save his people. And the Bible says the Lord relented and did not bring on to his people the disaster he had threatened. But God got angry. The Israelites had made a calf out of gold, out of possessions, out of material here on earth that they were sacrificing to and praising and worshipping. Therefore, God had every right to be angry. God had done so much to get them out of the land where they were slaves in Egypt and to save them and give them freedom. Yet the Israelites were so quick to forget this and turn their backs on him because they were not patient enough to hear from God. So let me ask you, is that something that you do? Do you easily give up on God when he seems quiet or doesn't answer prayer in the way you would like? Do you turn to other people or objects in order to try and get the answers that you want? Do you try and do things your own way and disregard God's advice? Now, if you answered yes to any of them questions, there is no judgment from me here because I know that sometimes in my life, I definitely go my own way and I get distracted by other things in my life rather than prioritizing God and going his way. So what are some of the other things we idolize and put in place of God? It's good that if we can recognize and accept what we are idolizing, then we can turn away from it and spend more time focusing on and being with God. Some of these idols could be family members or friends, could be celebrities or famous people who we admire and look at in awe and we worship them because we respect how amazing they are, how amazing they look, what money they have, the talent that they have. Sometimes even pastors or church leaders that we look up to and trust in can borderline make them idols and following what they say rather than what the Bible says. And you know, idols don't have to be physical. They can be things like spending too much time on social media, and that is something definitely I can relate to. Or idols can also be emotional, such as fighting addictions, and letting addictions, no matter what it is, take control of our life and guide our actions and our thoughts. But if we have made the decision in our lives to be a Christian and to follow in Jesus' ways, then we should choose to worship God just as Jesus did. In everything Jesus did, he always pointed to the Father. In John chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Yet a time is coming, and it has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. So Jesus is saying here that God 
wants worshippers in spirit and in truth. Therefore, Jesus is pointing us to be thinking about worshipping and respecting God. And we must worship God with our spirits in connection with him, but also because of the revealed truth of his word and our faith and belief in this. This is what it means when he talks about spirit and truth. We may feel it and know it in our spirit and worship him with that, but also the Bible is God's word and the truth is within the word. And the Holy Spirit does help us see the truth in this word and to build our faith and belief to then worship God and thank him and praise him for the word he has given us. So if we are Christians wanting to follow the guidelines that God has given us for our life, then that is another reason to why we worship, as is actually one of the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy 6 explains that, These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you, to observe in the land that you are crossing Jordan to possess, so that you, your children and their children after them, may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. So if we want to enjoy a long life, these are the guidelines to follow. And in verse 13, it says, Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you. So how do we serve and worship our God, the true God? Well, I love to worship by singing and I am not a very good singer by any means. But my favorite part of a church service is being able to focus on my mind on God through music. I often feel the presence of God and the Holy Spirit when I'm lost in the music singing praise, admiration, and thanks to the Lord. Sometimes instead of just singing, I will stand there and close my eyes and listen to everybody else singing and listen to the words that, of the hymns and the songs that they're using to praise the Lord and really receive them in my heart. I also love praise via singing because I feel like we are joining in with the angels. I'm sure the angels are in heaven praising God 24-7. And when we're singing to God and showing him the respect and love through singing, I feel like we're also joining in with the angels. But I also feel the presence of God when I'm surrounded by nature. When I'm on a mountain top or sitting alone on the beach, watching the sea and feeling the wind, I admire the beauty that is in the world that God has given us to enjoy. And I thank him for it. So worshiping for you, if it's not singing, if singing isn't something you enjoy, it could just be enjoying nature. It could be going for a walk, climbing up a mountain, taking in everything you see. I'm so blessed to be living here in Spain and to have some mountain tops and some hills that I can climb. And I say climb, I've got really bad stamina, so it's more of a walk up the hill. But when I'm up there and I see the vast view, when I see other mountains, when I see the sea, and the sky and the stars if it's at night. I really admire and thank God for what he has given us. And this is a form of worship. I also love to listen to worship music every morning while I'm getting ready. I rarely listen to secular music anymore as I like to fill my mind with God to remind me what an awesome God he is. But also worship music can be used as an uplifter and a comforter. When we're feeling down and we need reminding of how much God loves us and how much he has done for us, another form of worship is to sit and listen to music and remember the love he has for us. Other people enjoy other creative ways of worshipping, such as contemporary dance or through making music itself, or maybe through other means such as art, drawing or painting. And of course, spending quality time with God Reading his word or in prayer counts as worship, as you are prioritizing him with your time and your mind. We can also use our finances to bless others as an act of worship, 
or give it to our church or charities in order for God to use that money to help somebody else. However, as Christians, we are called to spend our lives worshipping. Now, that doesn't mean we have to constantly be singing Hillsong songs 24-7 or dancing around all the time. But the Bible says for us to be a living sacrifice. In Romans 12, it says, Therefore I urge you, brother and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So what does it mean to be a living sacrifice? Well, in the modern day, a sacrifice is when you give up something of value for the consideration of something or someone else. We sacrifice something we want to do for something someone else wants to do. It's all about putting others first. But in biblical times, sacrifice was a deeply symbolic and spiritual ritual where they would kill an animal as an offering to God. The idea behind this stems back to Genesis, when Adam and Eve first sinned. Their sin caused them to have a knowledge that they were naked and they were ashamed. But God used an animal skin to cover them. So a consequence of their sin was death, not just for the animal that covered them, but also for human mankind. Therefore, the covering of their naked bodies, but more importantly, the covering of their sin, was only accomplished by the shedding of blood, as the blood represents life. The draining of it from the animal represents the death. Now, of course, this was also an image of what was to come when Jesus became our ultimate sacrifice and covered us with his righteous blood to reconcile us with God without the need of animal sacrifices anymore. The Bible says that Jesus is the lamb, the lamb that was slain. Lambs were one of the animals the Israelites would have used in this ritual of sacrifice. And that's why Jesus is known as the lamb because his life was sacrificed so that we could live and that we can have reconciliation with God and communion with God. So now that we understand what a sacrifice is, which is giving up something for someone else or giving an offering to God, we can look at what it means to be a living sacrifice as mentioned in Romans. Well, with my description of the Israelites' sacrifice, of course, there was a lot of death. But for us, we can be living sacrifices with the life we are currently living by being obedient to God and accepting and following in his paths and plans, following his will for your life and having a servant's heart, which means being open, willing and obedient to serve him. Even in the tough times, and even when we don't feel like it, and even when we don't understand it, and we don't know why God is asking us to do what he's asking us to do, having a servant heart and being a living sacrifice means we trust in him, and we trust in his way for our lives and not our own. Like I mentioned, sacrifice is giving up something. Sometimes we have to give up our own plans and our own thoughts and our own emotions sometimes, and really listen to what God is trying to say to us and why and where he is guiding us. So why would we do this? Why would we decide to give up our life for God? Well, firstly, that's exactly what Jesus did for you when he went to the cross. He gave up his life so that you could have a life with God, an eternal life in heaven. And secondly, as it said in Romans 12, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. In view of God's mercy. Now mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone. And in the Bible, it says in Lamentations that God's mercies for us are new every day. Isn't that incredible? 
because as sinners, we don't deserve God's mercy. His compassion and his forgiveness for all the times we go against him and all the wrong we do on a daily basis. But God loves us so much. He loves us unconditionally that he sent his one and only son to die for us, that we can receive his mercy and forgiveness every single day. How can we not thank, praise and worship God for that? We offer ourselves as living sacrifice out of love and thanksgiving, not because we have to, but because we want to, as a response to all that he has done for us. So I hope this God day today has made you think about why we worship, who it is we are worshiping. Really spend some time with God today and ask him and ask yourself, am I really spending enough time with God? Am I really prioritizing my time and prioritizing God? Worship is about having love, admiration, and respect for something or someone. Are you respecting God in the way that you're living? Are you showing admiration by the actions that you are living? Remember, we are a reflection of God and a reflection of Jesus to the people around us. So if we live our lives as a living sacrifice, that will speak volumes to the people around us. And if we spend time in prayer and in worship and in thanksgiving, that will make us seem different to other people. Because other people put their reliance and their dependence on worldly things. And they're not eternal, but God is. So I just want to pray for you right now. Lord, I thank each and every person that has watched this God Day today, Lord. I pray that you really help them to focus on you and to really understand what worship is, why they are worshipping, and really reveal to them and convict them of what they are worshipping. And Lord, if they're not worshipping the right things, if they're worshipping idols in their life, if they're living life by their emotions and being led in the wrong directions, then Lord, I just pray that you put them back on the path you have set before them. You light their path. The Bible says, the word is a lamp to my feet. So Lord, I just pray for every single person watching today, that you are a light to their feet, that you guide them to you just as Jesus did. Everything Jesus did on this earth pointed to you. So Lord, as Christians and as followers of Christ, I pray that you are able to guide us in our lives so that we can point people to you. I pray that you reveal to people today their gifts and talents and the creative and joyful ways they can worship you and how they can share that with other people. I thank and praise you today, Lord, for my life. I thank you for the people you've put in my life, my friends, my family, and the blessings and provision you have given me. I thank you that we all have hearts and ways of worshipping you. And Lord, I just pray that we decide to spend more time doing that with you today. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, I thank you so much for watching today's God Day. I hope you have been blessed by the programme. And maybe you can do something practical today. Spend some time worshipping God. Maybe write a list of all the things you enjoy doing and see how you can worship God within that. And the mundane daily things that we do too. Walking to work, look around you, see the world that God has blessed you with. Thank him for it, as that is worship. If you are serving others within your job or if you volunteer, if you're caring for others and treating other people how you want to be treated, that is an act of worship because you are treating others how Jesus treats us. There is so many opportunities to praise and thank and worship God in our daily lives. And I really hope that you can spend some time today thinking about this. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you soon. God bless.